gentlemen, welcome back to the Max Bet Podcast, a podcast dedicated to gaming. We're your hosts. I'm here with Landon Michael Jones, and I'm Mike McKiskey. Let's get started. Let's roll. Welcome back to the studio. The Light and Wonder Studio. No the Light less. and Wonder State Studio. State of the art. If it sounds like we're having a party in here today, it's because we are. <laughs> There's about 42 people crammed into this little space to watch us do this, which is, this we should is, sell tickets. Do you get nervous when people watch you? Zero percent nervous. You get zero percent nervous? I think nervous? in, what are we, 100 in roughly? 100 in roughly. It was probably episode two when I realized I'm probably going to look like an idiot at least once a show. So yeah. I just stopped having any of that self-conscious like worry. Yeah, it Perfect, does, perfect doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. We just roll. Yeah. How was your Easter? Easter was good. Found all the eggs. You did? <laughs> <laughs> no, I say, well, I didn't. But yeah. we, you know, you hide the kids, hide the eggs, and then uh, we keep count because our kids are small, right? So yeah. six is the oldest. So it's, it only goes down from there. And so we hid like close to 50 eggs and nothing in it that's going to be like, it's not like actual eggs that are going to cause yeah. problem. But you never want like a dog to find an egg with something in it. Or so we were like counting, making sure. Do you do the plastic eggs and then just Correct. load yeah. them up? Throw some stuff sugar? in there. Yeah, sugar yeah, nice. is pretty much the primary gift. <laughs> uh, no money. We don't do money in the eggs at our house. It's not a thing. Yeah. We saw online a lot of people doing. Some kid found a ten dollar egg. I'm like, yo, can I work? Can I be your brother? Like that'd be great. Uh, but that was good, man. What'd you do for you? You don't have kids. You do anything no, history, or do you just kind of skip over that whole thing? No, I went to Houston with the family. Same program. Yeah. No. Egg program loaded up with sugar, so you got just kids just screaming, running around, all hyped up, yeah. all jacked up on Mountain Dew. So now that we're talking Easter, do you have a favorite Easter candy? Like, do you? Lo- or, I mean, I don't know if you're a big candy guy, but are you? Uh, is there like an Easter treat you look I forward really to? Know. Just smoking Peeps the whole time, or no? no I, I, nobody <laughs> smokes Peeps in my family. That's gotta, yeah, they, it's not a you Houston smoking Jones Peeps thing. in your family. No, I just felt like that would be a thing. If I was going to put you on something, it'd probably be more marshmallowy than. Uh, than not more more yeah. what's your favorite i'm a cream egg guy man just old yeah. school can't eat more than like one of them without feeling like you know you're gonna have a bad day but i don't know who decided that a giant <laughs> easter bunny was a good idea like and then eggs somehow the tie-in yeah my parent or my sister and brother-in-law hired this easter bunny to come over and meet the kids oh, okay and like, nice. creepiest thing you've ever seen just yeah. a six foot giant <laughs> bunny he's just a middle-aged man trying to <laughs> kick it man you made him wear the bunny suit like what's going on blue tried to kill him blue's like oh this is my <laughs> chance is, this is where <laughs> this the guard is my dog. hunt i'm gonna kill um, an easter bunny but yeah no it's 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 interesting the, the that whole program even just, my even my kids were like true. because we where we went to do the easter like meal there was somebody dressed up as yeah. a bunny and my daughter my daughter's like Man, it's not the real Easter Bunny. I go, what do you mean? She goes, that's just a guy in a suit. I go, <laughs> well, the real Easter Bunny's tired. Right? You try to keep it going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? But you're just like, okay, yeah, that's just a guy in a suit. Just take a photo. It's it's gonna be fine. It's gotta be so much harder now to like kind of keep that program the going magic. now that the internet exists. Well, they're not big on the internet, fortunately. Yeah. Like we're not just giving them free reign. But the the harder part is my kids are super skeptical, yeah. right? Because like a, from here's the problem. I broke the wall early because they go like my daughter frozen movie. Elsa shoots ice, right? She's like this whole magical (laughs) ability. So my daughter's like, well, what's my magic power? I'm like, it's the power (laughs) of positivity kid, right? Like you try to do so. And then she goes, well, I want to shoot ice. I'm like, so do I, but like, that's not in our gene. She's like, well, then she goes, is that even real dad? So I was like, well, no, it's a movie, right? Trying to explain the difference. And now everything is questioned whether it's real or not. So Santa, Santa real? I'm like, yeah, you saw the presents, right? Like, I'm trying to keep some. Like, I got to figure out where to lie and where not to lie. But did, did I tell you what my little seven-year-old nephew did at Christmas? No. So he got up at 5.30 before anybody was up, came downstairs. Nobody's awake. Oh, you did tell me And that. just crushes every Christmas present every under the tree. He his sim- yeah, that's his 100 sisters, presents. My dad's, my mom's mine, his mom's, his dad's. My dad came out at like 6.30 in his room. He goes, Maverick, what have you, what done? Have you done? He's opened every present. <laughs> Dear God, child. Uh, did you get them all rewrapped in time or what's the what happened yeah, there? Yeah, my sister and mom had to like do a scramble Power rewrap. Wrap. But the best part was is it was all caught on like uh, CCTV, footage. yeah, in so their good. living room. So we have the footage of that. Just some kid having the day of his life, which was pretty great. Um, women's pajamas, yes. Like, he had no idea <laughs> yeah. who these are for, right? He's just like, it's like this is you great. Can see it on the thing. Yeah. His first gift is like this pink microwave. He just looks at, throws yeah. it. Next, <laughs> He's like, no pink microwave for me. I want the rollerblades. Uh, 
All right. Who do we have today? We have Mr. David Gill. He's your buddy. I feel like I should let you walk through it. He seems like a cool guy. I met him a few times, right? Just yeah. because of you. But you I tell me. Who honestly, I haven't heard a ton of his story, so yeah. I'm excited to hear more about it today. But um, he's in the technology space yeah. within our industry, which is a space that I don't know a ton about. Well, in terms but it's, of, and to me, what's interesting is like yeah. what they tend to do. Like, so Technologent is his company. Yep. And so he's one, the vice president over there. So they supply all the infrastructure is how I guess you would call it. Right. So when you're sitting there going, well, you go on the Internet and you want the Wi-Fi to work. Yeah. Like, well, I'm, my understanding is they provide a lot of that or what the system sits on top of. Like, so all the behind the scenes goings on of the technology of a casino, that's what these guys are operating in. Yep. And it's like you just take it for granted. Yeah. Like you take for granted you're going to plug the card in and the card's going to work. And so you go, well, yeah, like a light and system, for example, might be the communication. But that sits on something. Yeah. And the thing it sits on, I think, is what these guys make, right? So It's everything it's from the technology <clears throat> in your room to the POS yeah. systems for checking in. It's all the infrastructure of tech that a casino and hotel needs to run. So I'm excited to dig in with him on that. Yeah. Let's and do that's it. it. Let's roll, baby. Let's go. David Gill, welcome to the Max Bet yeah. Podcast. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming Thanks on for in. Time. Do you want to uh, explain technology and what you do for <laughs> sure, that? Sure, sure, sure. So, It'll be easier for us. <laughs> so David Gill is my name. Uh, been in the gaming space since 2003. I was brought over from, I worked at Cisco. Yeah. Okay. And then got, came over to Technologin. Technologin is a reseller. So they call it a VAR, value-added yep. reseller, or a system integrator. Yep. We try to lean towards system integrator because, you know, we just don't want to push paper and product. Um, and so Technologin, what we do... Um, we were one of the few VARs that actually focus on entertainment, gaming, and hospitality. That's one of yeah. our verticals. But as a company as a whole, we do everything pretty much from the data center to the edge. So yeah. you got data center, networking, storage, you got security, we have staff augmentation, um, managed service, professional services that are associated. So we kind of, our tool belt's pretty large. Yeah. Right? When I was thinking about it, and tell me if I'm wrong, because I try to break it down in my mind like simpler ideas. So I look at you guys, if somebody's coming to you, they're buying essentially infrastructure that everything else sits on. So you say, I have a casino system. Well, that's got to sit on something, and that's kind of the stack or whatever you want to call it, the architecture mm -hmm. that you yep. guys provide and help design, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the, the I mean, is that an accurate? That's, a, that's yeah, exactly perfect. it. So what it is is we work with different OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers. Yep. 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 So whether it's Cisco, Dell EMC, NetApp, et cetera, sure. et cetera, right? ServiceNow, whatever. We don't have our, a proprietary platform, so that's where the reseller comes in. Got it. But then we provide the services to what we're doing. So when you talk yeah. about those different stacks, that's where you're going to see the technology and the integration from the different pieces. And in gaming, as you guys are aware of, it's evolved quite a bit. Sure. You know, you're, you're talking about like these hybrid cloud environments that we're hitting. Security's become such a top niche. Yeah. And then, you know, historically, even companies like Light & Wonder, where they focus on gaming, you're touching other verticals of their business. And gaming's a very unique situation because you got point of sale, yep. lodging, you got the gaming, you got food and beverage, you yeah. got, you know, retail. So there's all kinds of stuff that they have to touch and integrate their systems to. Sure. And you're starting to see gaming platforms actually do that too. Like, how are you tracking them? How are you sending real-time offers? You know, even the cardless yeah. entry type situation right like you go to starbucks with a mobile app so you're starting to see the technology start converging and it's all becoming very pervasive yeah um so it's exciting times to be honest because what you're seeing right now is a total change than what it yeah. would have been 10 years ago where sure. you just have a slot director that's worried <clears throat> of the floor and that's who you deal with right. now you could be dealing with a business person that maybe is running marketing campaigns or you know, you got to deal with IT that's supporting yeah. it. You're seeing IT's role change from just keeping the lights on to actually being part of the business yeah. when they drive decisions. And you're you're talking to more people within the organizations, and it's it's really cool. I mean, it's it's kind of neat. Well, I've noticed that even here. Yeah. Like you talk about the prevalence of technology and in, in IT. Like when we're doing projects internally, we say, okay, we want to fix this or add this. You know, whether it's product related or business internal business, right. it's like, all right, well, let's get IT in the room. Right, because the chances are good the thing you're doing, whether it's to your Salesforce system or your ERP or whatever, it's going to require either some programming or maybe some new, you know, server setups or whatever you need. And it's like, oh, IT is on all of it now, right? Yep. So that's that's what I was saying. Like, uh, you know, in the intro, it's like, hey, the technology's touching all of it. Like, exactly. there's not a world anymore really where there's no tech. So you got to get comfortable with this idea of tech, and then having somebody like yourself. And I, 
I don't want to sell it for you, but like for me, <laughs> not having a specific brand that you represent make, seems like it would make your consulting more genuine, right? Because you're going to say, look, the best thing for you is Cisco, for example. Yeah, best of breed. And yeah. you're not hamstrung by saying you have to go with Dell for no, no offense to Dell, like because that's who you are. You get to say, well, here's the best solution based on everything we've seen, and it kind of makes it a little more maybe yep. more fun. And yeah. it goes back to what you're saying too. Each customer has a reference architecture, yep. right? So you're helping them <clears throat> take that to the next level. So you kind of want to, when you do a purchase today, you're future proofing it for tomorrow. Yeah. And so we look at it from customers of life. So we want to get integrated in their business and really understand what they're trying to do. And you look at you hit a very important part because I mean you think about the consumer side of it. What is the expectation? Take just yeah. a layman person that does their day to day. Yep. Take Starbucks. You know, you do a mobile order. It's speedy. It's quick. Yep. You know, if you go back to the days where you're standing in lines, at, you know, for a hotel room, it changes. Now, one of the issues, for example, like on the Strip, that's different for each market, as you guys are well aware of. Yep. Um, but like the Vegas Strip, for example, they don't have an issue of occupying the rooms. They're ninety plus percent. Sure. Their issue is the turnover to get the clean rooms to get the next person in. Uh, just the speed of turning around. Exactly, yeah. so sometimes that creates constraints. So how do you minimize that impact on that patron that comes in there, right? So hmm. it could be through technology, through the mobile apps, and hey, check in here, and hey, while you're here, how do you gain that market, that wallet share? Because it's also a very unique environment on the strip where your competition's in walking distance. Sure. Whereas if you go to like a Native American property, it's more of a captive audience. They drove there for a specific yep. reason. They're, they're going to do what they're going to do, whether it's eat or whatever, right? So the strip, you know, the average stay, you know, it used to be like 2.4 days. Mm. So people come here sometimes on business and stay on vacation or, you know, vice versa. So it's a very different paradigm in terms of the patron. When you're on business... You know, a lot of people are using expense accounts. You're going to the high-end steakhouses. Yeah, right, right. You go on your own with the family, it's going to be a different environment. Sure. So, it, I mean, this is why it's so cool to have people like you come on our podcast because we talk about slot machines yeah. and online online gaming, sports betting, all these things that seem to be the core of the business, but you never think outside of what it takes to kind of operate the business at its core, right? The enabler. The well, enabler. The things, right? And you bring up a very good point. Like, for example, <clears throat> prior to COVID, gaming was like third or fourth in the in the valley. Right. Number one is convention sales, right? A yeah. lot of people don't realize that. But when you get to a Native American property or an off-site, like out of the strip, yep. it's the, it inverses the model. Yeah. And gaming becomes number one. Sure. So when you're dealing with the different customers, even for you guys... It's, it's almost like you're customizing those solutions for what they're doing, right? Yeah. So there's going to be unique situations because of the convention space we have mm. that there's going to be technologies around it. Um, a simple one's Wi-Fi. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> how frustrating is it when you're on the show floor? And I, I can imagine like some of the marketing teams get annoyed because sometimes you pay for that access. Yep. Yeah. And then you're on it and you're like, we pay for this? This is barely low. Like, I feel like I'm on AOL 1996 again, right? It's not helpful. Yeah, you jump uh, off and your 2G is faster than your Wi-Fi. That's it. Yeah. Right? And so that's obviously it. Yeah, job. and you know, you think about it. When you someone comes to a convention from out of town or even if they're local, think about how many devices you carry. Usually you have a laptop, yeah. Yeah. maybe an iPad, your phone. So right there, there's three devices. Sometimes yep. there's more. You have, you know, but through Bluetooth and all these different things that are connected, you got to have the bandwidth that handles that. Yeah. And it is an upsell. It's part of convention packages. It's how they compete on the strip between one another. Mm. So those type of things, as simple as it seems, are very important because it's almost better not to have Wi-Fi, for example, than to have bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. Because if everything you just said, if you're trying to log on and it's frustrating and it takes 20 minutes, you're like, dang it. Especially if I paid for it. Exactly. Because right? if I'm paying for it, you feel like it should be like reasonable. Exactly. If it's free Wi-Fi, I get it. You probably hacked me while I'm sitting here, and I'm I'm used to it being slow. But when you start paying for <laughs> you the rent, well, that's what we, I mean, I always get nervous, and maybe you could tell me how founded or unfounded that is. But they always say, well, it's open Wi-Fi, right? So like, be careful because everybody's gonna, yeah. whatever, pirate your data or something. And so, I mean, I don't know how real that is, but it's it seems it's a to real be, deal. Yeah, yeah. So in the Internet fact, there was pirates. an article this morning in there yeah. that my mom actually forwarded to me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. Do, not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do not connect your phone to the airport free plugins. Oh, the plugins? Yeah, because people are taking data from there. Oh. So, Interesting. And you think about the breaches that have happened. So on that subject of security, security's yeah. become a huge I was just topic. Ask you. Yeah. And in fact, MSNBC today. So in the office, I have it running all day. They're talking about, you know, hopefully nothing ever happens with China and us sure. and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they're saying the cyber war is going on now. 
Mm. And so all the cyber companies and all that stuff, cybersecurity. And when you deal, we actually dealt with a few casinos that were breached. I won't name names or yeah, anything. Probably smart. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Some are public, but either way, I'm not going to say yeah. it. But it's it's an odd situation because when you get breached, what happens is their insurance company gets involved. Mm -hmm. And when their insurance company gets involved, they steer things in a whole different direction than like a business would run. Sure. So you might come in and do an assessment or, hey, how do you get, you know, if there's ransomware or whatever it may be, you come in, but the outcome can be very odd when you start getting insurance companies mm. and all these things going in. And a lot of these places want to keep it quiet. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's not good press to do. So that's top of mind for sure. I mean, a lot of the things we're seeing in the industry is security is one of the key pieces. Hybrid cloud is another. What does that mean? Hybrid, well, you got private cloud, public cloud, okay. you got on-prem versus kind of off-prem, okay. right? So you got like switch. Keep yep, in mind, yep, yep. in Nevada, we have the largest data center in the nation up yeah. in Reno. Oh, really? It's not Switch. It, it's Switch. Oh, it's Switch Reno. Though. Switch yeah, Reno. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then this is huge, right? So this well, is like a sister company. That's what I was going to say. So for those that aren't like in Vegas or familiar, Switch became, it feels like just this overnight massive install. Yeah. So it was, I used to live similar, like in that area, like Mountain's Edge kind of area. And so it's just big warehouse looking thing, Switch. And then all of a sudden... I don't know how tall they are. Thirty foot walls go up with like all of a sudden, bob wire. It looks like the Pentagon. Yeah, but then yeah, it's crazy. But armed armed guards. So you yeah. see these guys in the in the Humvees, and I'm like, Yo, what do you got in there? <laughs> and then it turns out it's like everybody's sensitive data. Yeah. Right. So it's like I guess when you think about like I think about Ocean's Eleven where that nerdy guy taps into the wire, that's there. <laughs> right, so you could, if you wanted to, like, if you breach that facility, you could tap in and probably have access to all kinds of records no one wants you to have access to. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's wild. It's crazy, and you think about it. So that's where you know they're doing storage offsite and all that stuff. And um, so when you see that happening, security is a big piece. And then sure. the other piece that we're seeing in the three pillars, kind of what people, are, our companies are doing, is automation. Mm. So they're trying to streamline things. So yeah. you have disparate yeah. systems. And whenever you do a technology, and you guys are well aware of this with your products, is the people and processes are just, if not sometimes more important than the technology. Right. Because if yeah. you're, you're not built to manage those or pull the data or the analytics that they say you could get, you know, there's tons of information that, think about all the different information that comes just from a slot machine sure. or your player tracking uh, device. There's so much there. How do you digest all that? So how do you automate that? How do you make it so it's, it's usable information, right? Yeah. So that's the struggle they're they're kind of going to. And you're seeing the partnerships now of like the AWS, the Microsofts, yep. and the Azure, and uh, Google. And I actually sat through um, a presentation with Google and it's funny, it makes you want to turn off your phones because you feel like Big Brother's watching <laughs> you. Always. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's we crazy. have a whole segment about <laughs> yeah. that. We're going to open our phones later, and they're going to be trying to sell us servers and hybrid cloud exactly. storage plans and all this stuff just because we know it's listening. I'm curious like, how far you would be the perfect person to answer this because we talk about it a lot on the game <clears throat> side, like how far behind technology we are in terms of offering like an advanced just game greatest, or just the latest yeah. and greatest, just on the game side, right? How far behind are we on the technology side of just running a property? Or is it so it, depending on which one, obviously, yeah, but sure. you're about five to 10 years yeah. and you actually see like where I saw you guys at ice, yeah. yep. you see Europe embraces technology a lot quicker. It seems yeah. like, mm. so, you know, the online sports betting, the esports. how do you monetize that? You're seeing more and more of that. Right. And then also even think about your sports betting apps. Yeah. Everybody's trying to do the real-time bet, right? Yep. There's a lot of money out there for right. that. So you, the technology, part of it, you say, is regulation and some of that. But I, I think gaming in general is a late adopter compared to other industries. You look at healthcare with what they've done as uh, internet as a service type s scenarios where, you know, it's off-site medical care. So mm. we're thinking you mean about like teledoc, like when your yeah. mobile app to the doc. So that's one about? way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's through the collaboration tools, sure. right? Whether it's WebEx, Zoom, whatever, right? So you have that, but you also have devices. I could say you have a, one of those CPAP machines. Mm -hmm. There's actually a prescription on there and they're measuring that or somebody that mm. has a pacemaker. So instead of going to the doctor like you traditionally do, they just pull up just the metrics. Pull up your reading boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. And so you could do like you're talking about. So your offsite care, one, it reduces the impact on the hospitals, right? Yeah. So there's less people come in the office, but you're, du you're getting I'd say double the volume because now you have people calling in mm. and you're able, now it's just a matter of getting a doctor in front of them. And half the time you're dealing with a PA anyways. No. Yeah, right. That seems right. So you see, wow. and you're seeing these other industries influence though what we're doing here. You know, mm. you take Disney, for example, okay. think about like their fast track and yeah. the way they, 
they look at their, they engage their guest experience, right? Yeah. And how they measure that. It's one of the key things. Look at gaming does. They have their gem scores. Mm. So you're seeing like there's a lot of synergies between those Explain different groups. Explain the gem score. I was going to say, I'm not sure I'm familiar yeah. with that. So it's the, um, the gem score is essentially the gaming uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm spacing That's what okay. it stands yeah, yeah. for, but what is that acronym? I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. But it's um, it's one of the things that some of the executives are actually bonused on oh, yeah. in terms of so it's their ratings that they yeah. get. So when let's say you do a survey uh, or whatever, okay. guess experience measurement. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's say you go to a, a location, and this is another way too. So like, let's say your Wi-Fi didn't work, so you yeah lower the negative gem score. score right? Yeah. So that score is going to impact eventually, like those president properties, the property president, excuse me, the IT folks, the people that support that. Mm. And oftentimes there's a monetary aspect to it too, because if you have a bad experience, what do you usually do? You give somebody free, you give something yeah, yeah, right. to enough. keep them, right? So there's an association of a cost to that. So gem scores is very are very important to the executive management especially. Mm. So that's something that is all around guest experience. Sure. Yeah. So when you tie that into like what Disney does or even airlines do, they're all looking at, their guest experience. So yeah, now right. how do you converge that into the gaming floor? Yeah. I mean, it seems like tying it all together is the right answer, right? I mean, in terms of when you say Disney, some of the things I also think about is like cruises or whatever you go, this is my account. Yep. So if I'm buying a coffee, if I'm playing three card poker, if I'm buying whatever, like it's all my account. Yeah. And so like the casinos right now, to your point, I think earlier you said disparate systems. It seems like a lot of times it's not the same, right? Cause my gaming floor is maybe different than my F and B is different than my whatever retail. Uh, and I don't know if that's by design, but it feels like the easier you make it for me, the happier I would be. The higher the gem score, I'm going to leave you. Hot right? in here. Yeah. Well, we're it's just hot in here on the podcast, <laughs> man. Fire, man. Fire and info smoking, in, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You're getting, sure. starting to make me sweat. <laughs> it's well, like, no you aren't even tough press. The, the bright <laughs> lights and light and wonder studios, buddy. What are we doing? So, so how many, what is the percentage of casinos that are going through a value added resource such as yourself and looking at this tech stack as being an important part of their business? model i mean because i remember when you guys got started five or six years mm -hmm. ago you guys were like literally the first to enter into the space as a value-added resource from what i know um how many people are are what percentage like the model yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so i think there's there's a bunch of technologists out there right? yeah, okay. so to what level it yeah. depends so to your point though we were one of the first that said let's create a vertical right. and focus so in our office we have over 250 years of collective experience wow, yeah. <laughs> so i years. try to hire like, for example, we hired the old VP, David Tam, from Stations. He yeah. works yeah. with us. Yeah. Pavlov, my peer, yeah. you know, he's been in gaming in the Valley forever. You sure. know, I worked, I started in IGT in 2003. And right. We go down the list of the different places where people have worked. So we try to get knowledge from that industry. Sure. But what you want to have is it's a pendulum. So think of it, if it swings too far one way where it's just all outside knowledge, they don't yeah. understand the gaming industry. Right. right. And if it swings only to gaming industry, they may not understand the technology industry. So you want it to kind of balance, be in the middle, yeah. right? So that's kind of what we're trying to do. But yep. every company that runs an electronic device has some sort of infrastructure, right? Yeah, right. So they're buying it from somewhere. Now you might see some people that actually go to even like eBay or online. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, dude, are you sure? these from bold, Russia. Bold move, <laughs> Cotton. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's where the cyber war is being fought, by the way, is on <laughs> yeah. the, the secondhand like, Russian infrastructure. But... No malware on this server. <laughs> yeah. Yes, go ahead perfectly and take clear. It. Please connect this and your phone to <laughs> yes. it. Click here. Yeah, exactly. But you're seeing a lot of companies, I think, do it and they're recognizing it. And the ones that are maturing, um, quicker i think and yeah. especially when you have competition which competition isn't good yeah. because it elevates everybody's game sure. otherwise you're going to fall off right? Yeah, right so you're seeing a lot of that take place and when you talk with some of the folks the biggest thing you see probably is just the maturity level of their organizations and what i mean by that is you know you get in some rural areas they don't always have a talent pool like you could get in other right. areas even vegas we struggle somewhat at times to get technical resources you see a lot of people from other states where you know, like Silicon Valley type folks that come in or whatever. And so that I think that's a challenge for a lot of people because especially as you get into a remote property, pay equity versus, let's say like Las Vegas right. and what Vegas offers yeah. versus what some other areas offer, it's very different, right? So there's a lot of different um, tangibles that I think come into play, but at the end of the day, everybody's pursuing 
some sort of technology advancement. Everybody yeah. wants an edge. Everybody. Yeah. We have to. You don't want to have a jump. I mean, you play football. You don't yeah, want yeah. it to be equal. You want to smash the person. That's right. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. If you want to win in any way you can. So if yeah. I would imagine at some point, and you mentioned it here in like the very competitive Las Vegas Strip, like technology becomes a competitive advantage, right? right? So because I, for a while, was a, I had a platinum MGM membership, right? And so anytime you checked in, they go, well, you got a separate line. Or then it became your mobile app. And then you go do the mobile app. Then you go in this private room. And it was like, well, this is great. Like, I didn't wait more than five minutes in a line if I wanted a room locally. Um, but that made a big, but I didn't have status, right? Maybe I didn't get that, at, let's say, at the win. So I would be like, oh, I, I love the rooms, but maybe I'm going to just stay over here because it's faster, it's easier. Like, the more convenient you make it, it becomes, and, you're going to get my business. And think about how companies have changed their reward reward programs. It used to be slot play. Yeah. And then yeah. you get a mailer that said, ah, oh, here's $10 free play or whatever. Yeah, right. Well, what if you're a person that doesn't gamble? Right. What if you go there for, you know, the shows or eating? Yep. So you're seeing a lot of them start tying in those verticals that we discussed earlier sure. into all aspects of their business. Because again, your wallet share is at that time. And historically, casinos used rear view mirror metrics. And what I mean by that is, they didn't get the metrics on you until you left. Mm. Now they want real time metrics so they could see your spend, see what you're doing. And that's where like the Amazon, you know, AWS, sure. the Azure, the Googles, with your device, they could track that. And they mm. could track what you're searching. They yeah. could track what you're doing. You tie that into, it's say a gaming system. That's a game changer. So you tie that into, let's say I'm walking that's through wild. a casino and they track me. And they say I'm walking by, I don't know, O at Bellagio. Sure. Boom, I could get a real time offer like, oh, they're, they're going to give me a half off on a ticket at O. Maybe, you know, I'll check that out or something. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it seems so simple. I mean, like, even if you, like, <laughs> so just take Starbucks, easy. right? For, yeah. for example, you're not just bonusing your customers on coffee purchases, right? I'm not a big coffee drinker. I go to Starbucks to buy the Gouda egg sandwich, right? <laughs> True. I'm not buying coffee. Does Gouda. that mean I'm not yeah, getting yeah. any points? That's, That's you're getting like, those points. If you, if you yeah. break it down in like, that level, I mean, it's it seems pretty simple to understand. Like, if you're coming to my casino to spend money, whether it's gaming or not, you should be rewarded. And that's that's the convergence that you're seeing from the yeah. other industries that influence what we do, and vice versa. Right. But hmm. the guest experience at the end of the day is kind of king to it all. Yeah. Because that's who's going to drive the revenue spend. So you guys, I mean, think about even the math you guys do on your machines and the success that you guys have. Those type of things are done by design. Yeah, it's right. all player, to your, oh, we call it player experience, but 100%. Like you want to yeah. know, I mean, I'm not a game designer, but my assumption is one of the first things we talk about, what kind of ride do you want these guys to go on? Do you want it to be mm -hmm. a pretty low volatility, right. easy bump along the hills, or do you want it to be a rip your face off up and down? And then you start with that experience and you work backwards, right? Because they're, they're very different experiences. It just depends on which one you're designing for, and, right? And think about where things started as reels and look at games yeah. today. Take it all the way to eSports. Yeah. And how they're trying to monetize that. Like, and you look in like, I call them kids because my kids were looking at these like YouTube. They, yeah. I, one time my daughter's boyfriend was looking at a YouTube of a guy playing a video game. I'm like, what are you doing? It, but yeah, that's yeah. like their ESPN. That guy's a multimillionaire, by the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I don't, exactly. even know which, don't even know which one it is, but they're all making tons of money well, playing. A good Halo. example. You guys know Philip Irby from Cosmo, and now he's at American Homes. Yeah. Yep. So his son actually developed a uh, app for one of those sites. Oh, really? And he's doing very well. Yeah. Nice. Jeez. Yeah. So I mean, right place, right time. That's right yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then maybe the confidence to do it, right? I think. That's one thing, so kind of switching gears a little bit, like my kids are young, right, six and under. But the day will come where they're going to have some idea. Hey, Dad, I think I can make this, or I want to do, like, and I just hope I'm not, like, a, in a bad mood that day, right? Cause, <laughs> well, because what you don't want to do is, like, make an app. Oh, you never make an app. We just go to work, you know, get a real job, right, or whatever. And it's like, but no, like, that is a real job. Yeah. Like, I don't know how old uh, the, the boyfriend is, or but you go... He might be not even 20 years old, making yeah. a ton of cash because he designed a thing and fit a need that, oh, by the way, every other teenager in the world wants to use because they're all watching these same YouTube channels as well that old dad here is not going to have any context on, right? And so it's like just having that belief to go, okay, try it out. See what happens. How right? many like, good ideas have been killed by old dad having a bad day, I bet coming a, home from dude, work? He's like, nah, that's stupid. I, and the kid doesn't go I out. would bet like, a lot, dude. Dad, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know that I yeah. ever had that level of like creativity and pursuit. And, and I think my parents probably would have encouraged it a little bit, but I could only imagine. 
That's wild. Well, and think about it because they're probably bankrolling it and they're like, I'm not paying a couple I don't, grand yeah, for I'm that. I'm working, or, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, especially back, it felt like when we were growing up, all our parents were like blue collar, right? Like, so it's like, you're busting your butt in the factory or whatever the analogy is. I'm not bankrolling half your salary just to do some app I don't even understand, yeah. right? So it's different, but. You, yeah, you wonder to it, like, and I want to hear these stories because I know you have them, but security <laughs> is probably not now, but not so much now, but back then, maybe 10 years ago, security was like an afterthought almost. Yeah. And it's always an afterthought until your until data breached. gets freezed <laughs> yeah, over until, and someone's yeah. asking for a couple million. Do you hear these stories? Yeah. And so you're spot on. Yeah. And I think companies now, because there's, think about all the press that's going right. around it from yeah. elections to, yeah. uh, I mean, you look at the lawsuit that's going on with Dominion and all right. Yeah, from, right, right, right. I mean, think about it. That's at the highest level of government yeah. that that's happening. Then you hear of, um, you know, somebody's personal da data, you know, the oh, PCI yeah. compliance type stuff. So right. it's all over. So everybody hears about it. The funny thing is exactly what you said is, Usually when like the CISOs of the company or the CIO would say, Hey, I need budget for this, they'd be like, Why? There's nothing wrong. Yeah. Because it's well, safe today. Yeah. Why do we what are we it's protecting? It's scary for guys exactly. like you and I that get gaming licenses at some tribal properties or some even states that aren't looking at security yeah. as like a serious yeah. measure. And then all of a sudden X tribal casino gets data breached and guess what? Wow. All your social, all your information yeah. they have probably in a filing cabinet in the back, but that's, that's well, yeah. if you guys ever get a chance, go to black hat when it's in town okay. yeah. and turn off your phone. I was going to say, leave your phone in the <laughs> yeah. room basically. Yeah. Turn it off, but look at, and just walk around and look at the different, they have hacking thought, like hackathons, they yeah. call them and they have, do, do they just hack people's phones? Like they do crazy things? stuff. Dude, I saw, so he's not wrong though. Like there was some example, I think. And yeah. then, so they were like doing some demo and and then I just saw this as an article. But then some guy, probably like a guy like me, just walked in with his phone, didn't think anything of it. And they're like, "Oh, uh, is Mike here? Yeah. My, uh, look, by the way, that's your vacation photos." They're like, "What?" <laughs> and your you? bank account. Yeah, they figured out maybe I was on this open Wi-Fi. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. they did. I'm not not that smart, but you go, "Oh yeah, it's real." Like I remember because there was a, a coworker of mine. Her husband was more. He's like a white hat, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he would go to these conferences, and you learn like the the guys that try to break the system, and then the guys that are trying to build the system, protect. You go, okay, well you're doing that. I'll defend like. And I want to get into your jujitsu kind of career For here sure. in a second, but it's similar to that, yeah. right? Like, and is a segue. You go like, and in, in the sport, you go, okay, well, if you're going to try to attack here, I'm going to try to counter that. Like, it's all moves and counter moves. And so the black hat thing, they go, well, here's what we're going to do to just hack things. You think you're secure, Mr. Casino? Watch this. Like, here's your personal data, like on the so, on so the screen. And yeah, you're yeah. spot on. So that's the extreme, right? Where somebody's doing like yeah. some crazy. But usually, what happens is it's an email. Oh, is it really? So majority of the ones is someone got an email, the clicks on it. Phishing. Yeah, phishing. we yeah. learned that's really right it. Through <laughs> the, our security yeah. The team. inside man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. So it's usually they get hands on a device. Right. And that device is, you know, whether a link or whatever. Right. Just like Facebook. How often do you see or Instagram where they're like, the, the new one is, hey, somebody you know died. And it's oh, a really? link, and I'm like, yeah, it seems unlikely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah like exactly. if I knew him, I would yeah. have known. Put they the died. name in the headline. Maybe I'll click. Yeah, yeah exactly. But the other thing too that's kind of neat when you see that is companies pay bounties to hire people to try to hack them. Well, I'm aware of that only because we had somebody reach out to our company and just say, "Hey, we got this thing you might want to look at," and we're like, "Yeah, yeah. What's your bounty ask?" I'm like, "No, no, no. Here you go. Like just a really. They were like a research firm. Uh -huh. so I was like, "Well, that's kind of cool." And so we looked into it, and they're like, some of the points, but we knew most of it, so it wasn't a big deal. But you're just like, huh. Because immediately our head of security go, oh, you probably want to bounty on this. And oh, there wasn't one. But like a lot of companies will say, oh, you figured out how to hack my app? Thank you. We're going to close that loophole or whatever. And here's, here's, a, here's a, I don't but, know what the numbers yeah. are, but yeah. Think about how many vulnerabilities, touch points there are in a casino. Uh, now take the Well, every slot machine would be one. Right? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, your At device, that's yeah, anything yeah. that's connected, anything that's plugged in, anything. So it could be anything from Alexa. It could be to whatever, like, you know, in yeah. room service or whatever. So you have that, then multiply that by X amount of properties yep. that they have. And I mean, yeah. that's an overwhelming number of ways to get in for a bad actor. Alexa you know? scares the hell out of me. You mentioned Alexa, it's creepy, man. Like, I, I, <laughs> I won't do it. Like, I, I'm a middle of the road tech guy. Like, I'll have the digital thermostat, but I won't have a smart lady listening to me. I turn Siri off because I don't want to deal with it. Like, I get nervous. So I, I can think, see that. Yeah, I mean... So to your jitsu jiu jitsu, yeah. jitsu jiu -jitsu career, yeah, I, I, I linked you I LinkedIn. I always do this to every guest. Well, I was that comes geeking in. out, we, yeah. Yeah, we like snipe their LinkedIn before they get here and we're like, Oh yeah, we know this and this <laughs> yeah. and this. I saw your profile page, I'm like, 
Oh, David won an award for sales. Oh, that's a weird suit. <laughs> Turns out it was that's a jujitsu. That's a rash guard. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was laughing. So for me, like I per, I started uh, training like two months ago, right? Uh-huh. And so for those listening that know, you know, like a t- t- super amateur, right? But you're 20 years in. And so I saw your picture recently. You, you won first place in like a world competition. So I go, that's not easy to do. So without knowing anything about you, I go, so you put some time in because that's clearly a... Uh, that's hard, right? Yeah, I try to train at l- five days a week is ideal for me. <sighs> that's, um, that's but it's tough with work, right? So well, you're juggling stuff. That's tough on the body, man. It and is. I get it when you're a veteran, like, it's different, right? So for me, like, I laugh because, like, Landon will ask, he goes, are you just beating everybody up in there? I'm like, zero percent. Like, doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't know, like, you're, st- like, how, you're like six foot-ish, yeah. buck 85 maybe. Yeah, I'm like 210. Okay, 210. So I shorted you there. But so I got him by 100 pounds and six inches. He, yeah. will, he will beat me in under a minute every time. That's what I was going to say. If you guys stay tuned, these two are going <laughs> to fight in no, about sir. five minutes. Move the table, yeah, put yeah, some yeah, yeah, like, just, I David just, just flips yeah. the table. Landon up. just wants somebody to so finally I would just run. You guys yeah. will laugh at this. So in 1998, I went to my first seminar. Okay. So my brother-in-law was, uh, at that time, he was in detectives. He ended up becoming okay. chief of police. Yeah. Oh, wow. And at that time, I was applying I, I was for to be a deputy up there. Okay. I ended up actually being a deputy after this. So. This is in the Bay Area? No, this is in Reno. Oh, so in Reno. my okay. wife was yeah, from yeah. Reno, so we moved got up it, there. It, so it. after football and everything, um, the Raider thing fell through. So I was like, life starts. And yeah, I'm sure. Like, Holy crap, I got to go to work. Yeah, right. And what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> now what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I always wanted to be a firefighter or something sure. like that. So police, I was kind of drawn to. So anyways, I applied and all this. So I ended up in Reno and I'm waiting for my background. And uh, my brother-in-law goes, hey, this guy, Gary Gray, is bringing Charles Gracie to town. And oh, this wow. is in 98. Yeah. Now, you're going to remember 93 is when the first UFC came out. Yeah. So it's only it six years, yeah. five, six year difference, right, of... Nobody, they're starting to learn jujitsu. This is you when know? like Dana White was a yoga instructor. At yeah, boxing and all that. Yeah. <laughs> is that. Yeah, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, right. So I go to this seminar, and to your point, so we go, go and I learn an arm bar, like a basic, and I'm like, holy sure. cow, this thing is. But you feel nice. like King Kong immediately. Oh, dude. So first off, so yeah. <laughs> that's right. Like, I know a move. I'm the baddest guy in the building. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's it. yeah. So this is hilarious. So I'm like 240 pounds. I still have my okay. football weight. Yeah. 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 And so they go, okay, we're going to live roll now. And it's only three minutes. We're sure. not even going the full. Usually five, we go five yeah, yeah, minutes, yeah, right. right? And so I have a gi on, and it's, I did some judo, so it wasn't foreign to me wearing that. But anyways, I go, and he matches me up with this guy that's about a buck sixty. So yeah. I look at him, and I'm thinking, like, dude, I know I could jump higher than Are you. Are you sure? I know I'm fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you. That three minutes, he's all over me. Yeah. And like, <laughs> Longest I'm, three minutes I'm you've had. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I actually joke. I say, if it would have been three minutes, one second, I would have died. Because after I was done, <laughs> I'm taking feels off like my knee yeah. because I'm dying. <laughs> Charles yells at me, put your gi on. And so I put it on, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I just saw the face of God to a guy <laughs> on yeah. paper Half your that size. I should have yeah. destroyed. That's right. And he's only a blue belt. And I was like, this is for real. So the biggest thing with jujitsu is checking your ego. Because I could For walk sure. in here and I could look around the room and obviously Mike's, you know, a presence, yeah. right? Like yeah, you're yeah. a big dude. Yeah. So you'd be like, oh, I don't want to mess with him. But the reality is the guy who's like, looks like the engineer <laughs> with glasses will spank you. Smoke. There's a guy, Mikey Museshi. <laughs> if you see him, you'd be like, and you throw him a football, you'd be like, there's no way he could kill me. <laughs> what like, a nerd. You see him yeah. catch it and you're like, and see him run. You're like, there's no way. He will do things to you that you wouldn't do to a farm animal. That's like, <laughs> that's like Jordan Levitt. That's another if you episode. saw Jordan Levitt on the street, you'd be like, uh, oh, what a little nerd. And he would just whoop you. Oh, dude. And some of these guys, and you talked about kind of a chess game, right? Yeah, Like right. the push-pull, the setups. Yeah. The, it's, it's amazing the guys that are so good at that level, they have attack after attack after attack based off of your reaction. Mm-hmm. Like Craig Jones came here, and he's one of the top dogs in the world, right? Yeah. He goes through us like we're nothing. And yeah, I compete at the master level, so I'm with guys my age and sure. stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I don't, you know, this isn't all I do. You know, it's a hobby, but it's an important hobby. I compete sure. a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I was fortunate enough last year that, you know, I, I won a bunch of stuff. I, I was number one in the world for my age. Wow. I won worlds. I won. <laughs> I didn't know exactly how serious no that was. No big deal. <laughs> and no, yeah, seriously. So I, I beat JJF, the Federation, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. gave me it. So I, you know, I take it serious, right? Yeah. But I'm by no means their level. Like when they come to town, it's like, it's unbelievable. And the stuff they do, 
you're like, okay, I saw what you did last time. And then they'll do it again. Yeah. And you're like, I know he's doing it. And have you had to use it in a real life scenario or like once okay. just kind of more of a hem up type thing, yeah. but nothing like where I get on the ground and roll around or take people down. I actually, it, it was like, I ended up doing a basic takedown and just holding the guy down. Yeah. Is all it was. Yeah. It was outside the gym at LVAC actually when I oh, first man. moved here. Gee. <laughs> so you sure about, you sure you want some of this? Yeah. Like he uh... actually, uh, it's a stupid story with the guy. <laughs> Cut me off, so I flipped him off, but then he freaking, I looked and I didn't see him, and all of a sudden I heard banging on my car, and so I got out of the car, and I, he started walking back, so I thought I was done, but, and then he started walking towards me, and I'm like, you know, you get that yeah, yeah. fear feeling, now like, it's, adrenaline. it's on, yeah, right? Go yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. And so he came up, and I was thinking, like, should I hit him? Should I do this? And I started thinking, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble, and all yeah, this right. stuff. Yeah, right. You can't just beat and up And it on was that. winter time, so we both had sweatshirts, so I was able to just, like, grab by his arm and do like this knee tap thing and that's all it was yeah it's no big deal he realized immediately exactly. i just held him it's like that freeze frame uh <laughs> so i know what you're thinking <laughs> but but here i am upside down in front of the gym yeah uh, so i had that that one incident but it was uh it was like a self-defense type thing the guy yeah. got out of a car and all that stuff but it, it was nothing big i i try honestly if i could walk away that's well that's, that's what i laugh about right because like you see guys like so jocko is pretty famous from being like a media personality navy seal Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, he was asked, he's a black belt, so similar mm -hmm. to David. And he had said, So he said, Hey, so if you get in a fight, what's your first thing? He goes, Run away. Yeah. Because, like, you don't want to be, like, you shouldn't yeah. be looking for a fight. Because it only takes that one loss, right? Like, in a, in a controlled scenario, okay, you go to the competition, you lose, so what? It's a, con it's a sport. You're right. But in the gym parking lot, like, what well, if that guy's armed? Like, you're, what you're if considered it's not, a you know... deadly weapon if you have, like, a black belt. <laughs> Did you have to right? register these hands? Nah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I hear that stuff, but I've never yeah. seen it enforced. Okay. Yeah, it right. might be more if you're, like, a professional fighter or yeah, something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. But Tyson probably yeah. definitely yeah. had But the, the thing that's interesting, so I actually just had a buddy. They were outside the gym, same type of thing. These guys started crap with them. He the, takes the one guy down, and the other guy runs over, and his younger brother actually took him down. Yeah. They hold him on the ground. He circles, takes the guy's back, starts choking him. The guy taps. Yeah. Oh, he and knows. He, <laughs> he's like, you got me. Yeah, but he let him up. Uh, and the problem with that in a street scenario That guy didn't is really tap, yeah. He gets up, and he still has the fight in him. And I actually watched a video of this one that was actually disturbing where the jujitsu guy was trying to calm the situation down. The guy kept pushing it, pushing it. So he takes the guy down and he actually gets him in an arm bar. Well, the guy reached in his pocket and grabbed a knife and came oh, up. No way. So like, you know, when you get in those scenarios, you could control and do things, but there's a lot of outside factors. Sure. Yeah. There's weapons, the there's crowds. There's, there's yeah. who knows. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know you're on the ground. You could get kicked. You could get, you know, whatever. So the best thing is like you said, what Jocko said is try to avoid it. Yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, usually the fight's over something stupid, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a, spot someone getting cut yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like who cares? <laughs> Man, you know, whatever. You know, argued or whatever. But it's rarely for like a legitimate reason. You know what I sure. mean? Like yeah, yeah. something that's life or death. Or no one slapped you your mom. Like yeah. it's not like one of those serious exactly. things, right? It's just kind of an, e an idiot thing. Yeah, no, for sure. So that's where in jujitsu for me, like we were you talking. Were saying, earlier, did you bring it back? Like, how does that help you in business, or oh, does it? Or, tons. Yeah, yeah. So like one of my, po I actually posted yesterday. So we were fortunate enough this year. Our team. Pabby and my team, we won um, sales team of the year. So sure. we got 27 local folks here. We have 18 folks in Mexico that we manage. And it's all with. for that business vertical. That's it's all over. And so up? no, okay. so we have other stuff too. Okay, so cool. there's regional, yeah, and then there's verticals as well. Yeah, yeah. So we do stuff with mining companies, healthcare yeah, yeah. companies, but entertainment, gaming, and hospitality. We call it EGH. Yeah. Is our largest no vertical way. that we focus hmm. on. Yeah, cool. That's so and, good to hear. Yeah, and it's, being in Vegas, it works out great, right? Yeah, but. We won the award, so I actually did the post based off of because I I need to do a better job of LinkedIn to be honest. I <laughs> we all do, it. yeah, yeah. I don't post enough or what. I was actually going to post this, but uh, we should. Yeah, it'd be cool to get a picture with you guys. Um, but the, what I found is there's all kinds of sayings in, in you know sports. So you you see often a lot of times things that are linked to military, things that are linked to sports yeah. that go back to other aspects of life because yeah. you think about it military is the most extreme because sure. it's literally life or death for sure right so when you hear these heroics um like i, I just read this navy seal book it's called guts okay and it's glorious under tremendous stress okay is what it stands for yeah. so it's yeah. talking about your mental fortitude and how sure. you move forward and then he's got all these stories so the stories get you 
going fired right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, so you read it and you hear the extremes where this guy got shot 18 times and still keeps going it's and all trail, this stuff. Yeah. yeah, but it's amazing. Like you think about like the mental toughness and the right. focus that the people do. And then you take it to sports and you got the Michael Jordans, right? Like how mm. is, you think about it, human beings are human beings. And at that level, you're the... 0.1% of the world oh, already. Sure. I mean, yeah. you got to be mental mind game. I mean, think about the genetics it takes just to play basketball. You got to be yeah. tall. Yeah, right. You got to be quick. Yeah. So if you don't have one of those, you're kind of shot, you're right? You football. might Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah right. <laughs> but you, there's and football's the same. You yeah, got metal, sure. you got the genetics for size alone. Like baseball right. you could get away with different sizes, sure. but you still have to have good high eye hand coordination if you're batting or whatever, right? Yeah. So you think about those aspects and from jujitsu, I wish I'd have actually did it for uh football. Because mm. when I was a kid wrestling in the Bay Area, like it was a joke. Like yeah. we didn't have any good programs oh, right. or nothing, you know, and nobody did it. My school was football, track, baseball, and basketball. Those mm. were like the four Those sports. Are the ones, yeah. And what you get in a team sport is great. You build camaraderie and all that. And it's great. It carries over to, you know, work. But the individual sports, I think, also have a big bearing on that too. Because although it's an individual sport on the mat, yeah. the team's getting you ready. It's your partners, yeah. it's your coach, it's all that stuff. Now, when you go out there, here's the other part, too. In football, you have 10 other people. If I miss a tackle because I play defense, there's a potential that 10 other people can bail you out. Bail yeah, me yeah, out. For sure. <clears throat> when you're on the mat, there's no hiding. If you're kicking my ass, you're kicking my ass. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So you have this, dip, but on the mat, you're all equal. That's right. And so it's fun in that aspect. And then on top of it, the workout, I can't even explain how hard yeah. it is. <laughs> so like my whole thing is... How do I become comfortable being uncomfortable? That's right. And it helps. That's the piece that carries over to the other aspects of your life. Because when you have that ability to kind of like let it shrug off and you yeah. use that ace mentality and you have that consistency, not every day is going to be your 100% day. Right. Maybe your 100% that day is 70%. Right. But you give it what you got. And that's yeah. the way it goes. And here's the deal, too. We all lose. For sure. In life, in that the, will be apparent from class one. Let me yeah, tell you, from no, class one, that'll be very apparent. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so, like what I told you, with that little guy just that's whipped it. me. Yeah. And that's life. You're not going to win everything. You're not going to deal with it. So, how do you learn from it and grow from it? We uh, it's Coming crazy up. how fast I know. the time goes. It's, it's, it's already, all gone, it's yeah. already like we, yeah, we're we blitz through it. We blitz through it. it goes so fast. <clears throat> um. But we do have to ask you two questions. Sure. We always finish it. I don't know if you've seen the episode, but uh, we are a gambling podcast. I'm not sure if you gamble or not or have. So we always ask our guests to give us a gambling story. A fun gambling story. It could be story. like a big win. doesn't be a small win. Any time that you went out, had fun gambling with your friends. Yeah, so um, actually a pretty cool gambling thing. Um, it, it was for a good cause. So. The lady that brought me to technology was a lady by Nisha Tonks. Mm. We know, know that. Nisha, yeah. So you guys know Nisha. Yeah. And you know, she was my babysitter. We'll talk about that oh. later. But <laughs> Holy crap. It's I love wild. Nisha. Yeah. So she introduced me to this, the guy, Marco, who's the president of our company. Yeah. So what happened is that's how we started talking verticals. Mm. So to go back to your question, um, unfortunately, she passed away. Yeah, in the yeah. Right yep. Route 91. Um, every year we do award to somebody in the company. We call it the Tonks Award. Oh, in cool. fact, my model that I we created for entertainment, gaming, and hospitality is, yeah. a, is a Tonks hospitality model. Oh, wow. So we named what we do in terms of alignment of engineering and all that. That whole model is based on her. Well, wow. one of the things we did, so we did our, in fact, last week was our national sales meeting. So the yeah. year before we held it over at Vidara, this year was at Aria. So we, um, MGM's a big company, a, uh, um, customer of ours and we're <coughs> big partner. So we try yep. to do our conventions with them and stuff like that, right? Anyways, we all got a hundred dollar chip yeah. and the goal was to raise as much money. So they had, um, some money at UNLV where they gave, uh, like scholarship and things sure. like that. And then they, there's a donation to a fund as well. So we all went out and gambled. So each but person on the team went out and gambled. And so I looked at all the progressive, everybody's like, oh, let's play craps or let's play yeah, this. And yeah. I'm like, no, dude, if I'm getting this. We're gonna hit the big bucks, and I said, <laughs> "I'll get, I'll give some to technology, but I'm yeah, taking yeah. a little something home yeah, for, yeah. for Mama Bear too, yeah, you right. know. <laughs> Take so it back the to kids. the family. So she needs yeah. a new, yeah, yeah. You know, you hit it, you know, five million bucks. You know, yeah, yeah. technology will be fine with one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. Mama spent five hours in the gym yeah. watching me compete. I think exactly. she's earned a, a prize here. Yeah. Exactly. So that was a that was a cool experience. So I ended up actually getting up to about seven hundred bucks. Wow. Okay. And then. It was crazy too because I started with a hundred and I started losing. 
Yeah. And then I got down to like, I don't know, 30 or something like that. And I'm thinking like, it's getting over. Well, I ended up getting to 700. I actually got tired of just hitting this because it's like every spin. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And so it's almost like um, the tournaments. You know how you see tournaments oh, yeah, where they're like this? It, yeah. So I was hitting it and hitting it. And when it's not your money, it's a little different too. Oh, yeah. like, it's easier, easier to burn through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so anyways, we had um, one of our customers, Amex, was actually going to tour our interoperability lab that we have in yep. our warehouse here. So I was going to host it. So I got a call from, ironically, Marco. And I'm like, hey, man. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, dude, you set us on a team event. Yeah, yeah. I'll do with that. And he's like, oh, well, we got to do this or whatever. So anyways, I ended up going from 700 to like 200 and something. And I just cashed out. <laughs> Typical. The story yeah. of everyone. <laughs> yeah. I the won story. and then yeah. I didn't win. Cool you story. You play to lose. Everybody else is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you've won money, so that's good. Yeah. And then the last question we asked, I'll be interested to know your answer. So we call it the Max Bet Challenge. We've always asked, we said, look, we don't know all the cool people in this business or that we should talk to. So you came on and we appreciate that. So who would you like to see us talk to in a future episode? Bonus points if you can introduce us, but like basically say, hey, let's call somebody out and get them in here to share. You know their who story. I think would be awesome? Who? And is there's a couple people in uh, IGT, for example. One is Tim Shortall. Okay. He's one of the best leaders I've ever been around, and I try to mimic some of the stuff he does. Okay. He's the East Coast uh, VP for sales. Okay. His team that he's collected together. So I moved to Jersey in 2006. Okay. And there's a guy, Tony Soffron, that was there that rolled up. His team has been the same team since like I can remember. Wow. Yeah. So these guys are 15, 20 years in. No turnover is a big story. Yeah. So yeah. coming from, I mean, we're all leaders in our perspective sure. fields. We understand what churn's like, right? Yeah, and what yeah. that does to a team. But to create that camaraderie, I think he'd be awesome. Cool. And he's a funny dude. That's he's from South Philly yeah. type guy. Okay. I can't he's wait. A good dude. Is he here in town? It sounds like he's, he's in, he's in Jersey. Out okay. here, my guess, so. But he's out here a lot. He's a guy and I can make an introduction for you guys cool. on that. Thank you, man. Thank you so much fun. guys for being awesome. on our podcast. This was awesome. And uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Catch right. you next time. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. No, I didn't mean to.